Hello and welcome to Crazy Danish Hacker. Today we're going to install Raspbian on our SD card. So here I have a micro SD card from Kingston at 16 gigabytes and the default adapter that came with it. It's really simple to use. Just insert the micro SD card into the adapter and then you're ready to use it. Most laptops, even older ones, have a dedicated SD card slot, which you can use just for this purpose, for example. Just plug it in and you're ready to go. First, we need to go to the raspberrypi.org website, go into the downloads, select Raspberry or Rasp Raspberry, <laughs> and then we need to use the full version. I chose to download it as a torrent, but you can also download the zip file. You also need the Win32 disk imager program, which you can download from SourceForge. And once you have this downloaded, then you just need to extract the zip file. And once you have extracted it, then you will have an image file. And this image file, you will be able to to write to the SD card, very simple. So you just click this button and then you copy and paste this and just select it and open. Make sure it's F, you can see SDHC here and F and then you just see, read data from device to image file, nope. Write data and image files to device, yes. Click this button, yes, and then you just wait. So once it has finished writing this file to the SD card, then we can actually plug the SD card into the Raspberry Pi, and then we can try and boot up the Raspberry Pi. So this will take a few minutes, as you can see. So once we've done that, we will look at booting up Raspberry Pi and configuring it. So now that Raspberry Pi has been installed onto the microSD card, we can just remove it from the adapter and then we can insert it into the bottom of the Raspberry Pi. Next, we will need to connect the Raspberry Pi to a network board. In this case, I have a separate router for this purpose. So it's really simple. The WAN port is connected to the internet. LAN 1 is the laptop or Raspberry Pi. And LAN 2 will be my laptop or the Raspberry Pi. So that's pretty simple as well. So just connect it, plug and play, and it will receive an automatic or an IP address automatically. Last but not least, we also need to provide some power to our Raspberry Pi. The best thing to do is to use a micro USB cable, for example from a, a Samsung Galaxy phone or any other type of device that uses this type of connector. Just plug it in via the power in and then connect the other end to your laptop for example. So now that we have installed the operating system to the SD card and inserted it into the Raspberry Pi, we can try and connect to it via SSH as it's on the same network as our computer. So in my case, I only have the router at dot one, my computer at dot two and the Raspberry Pi at dot three. So if we just click connect and click yes, then we will be able to log in. So the username is pi and the password is raspberry. And the first thing that you want to do is probably change the password. So that's raspberry, change it to another password. So after we have changed the password, the next thing that we want to run is Raspi config. And then we will select the option expand file system. Uh, 
And then we have already changed the user passwords. So that's fine. Boot options. Let's see. We will automatically log in as the Pi user for that's going to be used later. So we will just select console. Actually, the yeah, console auto login. Okay. And then we will just see, wait for network, nope, internationalization options. You can change these if you want to, but in my case, it's not really that important. And you use tab to switch between these. Enable camera, nope, fast, rest rack, nope, overclock, nope. Advanced options, let's see, overscan, nope, host name. Sure, we can change it to, say, PyWalk, for example. And let's see, memory split, nope. And everything else looks fine. So we'll just go back and then we'll just click finish. And we'll just like to reboot. And then we'll have to reconnect to the SSH server once it's up and running again. So if you're using Party, then you may run into a slight issue. And that is if you just connect with the IP address and port, then when you're using GUI applications like these, then you'll have some issues. And the issue is that you need to change a small setting and let's see if I can find it. Yes, you need to select connect. You need to go into connection, expand this. If it's not expanded, then you need to click data, and then you need to change it from Xterm to Linux, like I've done with this save profile. So if I just click load, you can see that I've changed it to Linux. And that's because otherwise you will have some funky lines, like instead of these lines here, you will have some letters for some of the programs. So after a minute or so, maybe two, we can try and reconnect. So we'll log in as Pi and with the new password and clear the screen. So now we'll just check the free space available. We got 11 gigabytes available, that's fine. Free memory, plenty of free memory, almost a whole gigabyte. And we can we can move on to updating apt-get, for example. So just clear the screen, sudo apt-get clean, and then just update. Now in this case, like the Raspberry Pi is a lot slower than your virtual machine. So keep that in mind when you're using these commands like apt get update, upgrade, compiling programs. It will be it, it won't be as insanely fast as a virtual machine and you will realize that things will take a little bit of time to do when you're doing it on a Raspberry Pi for example. But it's it's still reasonable. It's not it's not like, you know, 128 megabytes of RAM and a single core 233 megahertz Pentium CPU, for example. But even those can be quite fast depending on the operating system. So now that that's done, then we can apt get upgrade. And we need to specify it as sudo. And you can see that we need to get a fair bit of archives. We'll just click yes. And this may take a little while. I can't remember what step took a while when I was doing uh, or setting up the Raspberry Pi for this purpose, but I do remember that something took quite some time to do, and I just let it run by itself because I couldn't be wait I couldn't be bothered to wait for it to finish or look at it like this. So we'll just see. We'll just see how it uh, how it turns out. So now it's installing programs and it looks like it's going to take quite a while. 
So in your case, I would recommend that you just let it run for a while and then you just come back, you know, check in half an hour maybe or an hour. I'll uh, I'll put a, I'll I'll say later in the video when how long it took to install all the upgrades. So now that the upgrades are complete, we'll just clear the screen and then we will reconfigure the SSH server package because we want to generate new encryption keys so we're not using the default ones. And then we will run update rc.d SSH enable so that way it will run at boot time. And then we will just restart the Raspberry Pi again. And then we will be able to install the tools that we need, which is GPS Man and Kismet.